All right, folks, uh, welcome back in. Uh, thank you, as always, for tuning in, and thank you for Bleach Report for having me. If you don't know me, I'm Jake Ellibogan. I cover the LA Rams over on YouTube. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the Rams did lose their opener 26 to 20. Uh, I don't think that you could feel any better about a loss than this one. Um, this was one of the more gritty games that I've seen from this Rams team uh, since Sean McVay has taken over in 2017. I think there's a lot of good things to take away from this. Yeah, there's some things we can nitpick, but I think in the grand scheme of things, when you, you look at this game, um, just really, really proud of this team. Uh, a lot going into this. You know, there were people that were high on the Rams or also a lot of people that were low on the Rams using Aaron Donald as the reason that they weren't going to be good. And I kind of kept saying to people, I'm like, they have a lot of talent on that defensive side of the ball. There's some unproven guys, uh, but I think we're going to find out a lot more about this team. When they trade away, Ernest Jones was a surprise. Did it look like a surprise tonight? They definitely have something in Roseboom and Reader. I have to give them a lot of credit for that. This defense was flying all over the field. They looked probably more, in my opinion, I think they looked more, um, I, I think they looked more quick, athletic, explosive uh, to the ball uh, than they, they have. Um, I, I just saw a different type of defense. So we're starting off with the defense here. You know, Quinton Lake looking like a captain he is. I, I was really impressed with that. Um, the whole maturation process of Quinton Lake. I mean, it, it's been really fun to watch. And, you know, I think that's just something that, you know, this is what happens when you you draft well and, you know, you have good, uh, you know, good coaching and players and what have you. This is what happens. But Quinton Lake played a great game. Troy Reader balled out on another level. Troy Reader was really impressive, guys. Um, he had eight tackles, five of them were solo. He had a great pass breakup, was, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Amon Ross St. Brown. John Johnson had a huge interception. I mean, the Rams should have won this game. They outplayed the Lions. That's not really a stretch. And they were banged up to all hell, and they still put together a really good outing. Jared Verse looked really good in his debut. Byron Young had a sack. So when you look at this, I mean, this tells, this is the tell right here. 34-56 time of possession. The only reason the Lions had that time of possession go up as high as they did because they had that final drive. You have the total yards ends up being about the same because of that final drive. Going into OT, it was not even close. Stafford still looks astronomically better than Jared Goff, uh, like I expected. Now, the run game got going at the end of the game for the Lions, but for the most part, they kept it in, in you know check. The penalties were the same. Turnover, sacks. Rams ran 13 more plays. They were the better team tonight. They had 26 first downs. They had five more first downs. And I think it really comes down to the fact that guys stepped up in a way that really we haven't seen. I mean, the defense, the young guys and everything, they got things going. They didn't really have much of a run game. Kyron Williams was running all over this defense early on. They were hitting five-yard runs, six-yard runs here and there. And then you started to see the offensive line get injury after injury. Avila went down. Joe Nopum went down, right? You already are without Rob Havenstein. So now you have to put in Bo Limmer at center, who we might all be excited about, but this was throwing him in the fire early on. You already have Warren McClendon Jr. making his first start in the NFL at right tackle. And now A.J. Curry, who isn't on the 53-man roster, he was called up from the practice squad. He's not even actively on the 53-man roster. And now he is the blind side protector going up against Aiden Hutchinson. Huge mismatch. Despite all that, Matthew Stafford, poised in the pocket, delivers a 317-yard performance. He was fantastic. He really was. I know he had the interception. People are going to you know, have an issue with that. I get it. But he did not have a lot going for him in terms of the offensive line. A lot of pressure. Um, and, and I was just really impressed the way he hung in there. I was impressed with... First off, Tyler Johnson. I mean, this guy, I've always liked him. And Tom Brady actually was throwing to him in the playoffs when they won the Super Bowl. So I've said it before, Tyler Johnson has been in some big-time games. He's had to make some big-time plays. So I wasn't necessarily surprised that he was capable of this. Um, but I really thought that 63-yard you know, catch and run, he created that. And then you had the blocking downfield, but he created that. So... Uh, hats off to him. They lost Puka Nakua early on. who had four catches for 35 yards early, early on in the game. Showed that he was going to be a difference maker. He goes down. So Demarcus Robinson steps up. 
Colby Parkinson goes for four catches for 42 yards. Cooper Cup, I told you guys he was back. 14 of his 21 targets for 110 yards and a touchdown. He looked outstanding. I really think this game is really going to be upsetting for a lot of people, and I understand that. I'm not happy they lost this game. Let me make that very clear. But you cannot, you cannot be upset with the Rams' play, okay? Yeah, they could have done this. They could have done this. We can nitpick all we want. But the reality is they were dealt with an impossible situation. Going into this game, they knew their two starting tackles were going to be out. Going into this game, they knew their starting cornerback was going to be out. Okay. They knew those two, those three guys were going to be out, right? They knew Aaron Donald had retired. They have moved on. Okay. So they've gone through a shift. There's a lot of guys that, you know, are banged up and missing and whatnot going into the game. But then you lose Puka Nakua abruptly, right? Then you lose uh, Joe Nopum. So now you're down to your third string left tackle and you're down to your third string center and you're down to your second string right tackle. And you start to see three of the five guys that were starting at the end of this game were the preseason starters. Understand that. That's legit. I'm not making that up. See, Bo Limmer, we're excited about. Fan base has a lot of faith in him. They're excited about his long-term development. Bo Limmer being thrown in there, that was asking a lot. And it's not like the Rams had any other choice. I have to give a shout out to the officiating crew in this game. Yeah, there were some calls they missed for sure, but I was really impressed with the job they did. Um, the Lions had quite a few penalties that were not called in the playoff game. Uh, Craig Rolstad was horrible in that game, just like he pretty much always is anytime the Rams play. And this this referee, I believe it's Adrian something, He, I thought he his crew did a good job. It wasn't perfect, but I thought he did a good job. Um, so look, I, I think really what it comes down to is this, you can be upset. You have every reason to be upset. You can't be upset at the Rams. That was a gritty performance. They were down 17 to three and they took the lead in this game and they should have won it. If we're being honest and I want to make this very clear, I'm well aware of how football works. I know that yes, the lions earned it at the end in overtime. The lions are the only team that touched the ball. Do you remember what Chris Collinsworth said towards the end of the game? Late in games, first game of the year. A lot of these guys didn't play in preseason. They're not able, like the stamina isn't there. They were gassed. Both teams were gassed at the end of the game. It's that simple. Whoever got the, the coin toss was likely going to win the game. That's the reality. They ran down the Rams' throat. They didn't do that the entire game. That The entire game, we did not see that. And then all of a sudden... David Montgomery looks like he's a superhuman made out of animantium. Okay. No, like, I mean, that, that happened because guys were gassed. It's a long game. And now you're asking to play even longer while these guys are banged up. So yeah, I, I give a lot of credit. Uh, obviously got to give credit to the lions. They won the game, but I was just super impressed with the Rams, man. Um, because I already, I already feel like I have them winning. Like I've said before, I have them winning 13 games. I think they're one of, if not the best team in the NFL. And I think they proved that to a degree tonight. Because despite all those injuries, despite using three of the five pra uh, three of the five tr uh, preseason offensive linemen at the end of the game, despite losing Puka Nakua, their star receiver, okay, in the middle of the game, despite all of that, they were able to... They lost this game, but they were able to stay in it, take it to overtime. And to be honest with you, they should have won it, and they outplayed them. So we can get on Sean McVay for not kicking field goals and whatnot, and maybe that's fair, maybe it's not. But I do agree with a lot of the decisions he made, and I stand by them. I think at the time, it made sense. People will get on him for not calling the timeouts. I think at the time, it made sense. I think the end of the day, they played their hearts out. That's all I ask for. Give me that level of play. Guys go down with injury. I'm not expecting you to win. Like, I thought they were capable of coming back, but when I saw Avila go down and, and no boom and Nakua, it started feeling like the world was toppling on us. And, you know, I, I felt like I was like, the Rams can still win this ball game, but it's getting tight now. It's going to be hard. So 
I, I just give them a lot of credit. And I understand people are going to be complaining about Sean McVay. I get it. I, it's frustrating, especially to lose to the team that beat you in the playoffs. But I just, I don't have any issue with the way McVay coached the, the game. I really don't. I don't. I think they had a game plan early on. They wanted to pass. They wanted to soften up the defense. What happened was they could not run the ball because they were going to run in the second half. And then they had all those injuries. So, yeah, it's, I just don't think that the run was even possible at the end of the game uh, because of just how these guys really haven't played, you know, together. And it just, it wasn't great up front. Okay. There's a lot of different moving and shaking with the offensive line. It's asking a lot. Normally week one, you deal with this like week nine, maybe not even this bad. This was crazy. Week one. This is unheard of guys. This is unheard of. Absolutely unheard of to see three out of the five to three out of the five offensive linemen get hurt like that. I mean, normally everybody goes into the season with the offensive line that they're wanting to put out there. The five guys they want to put out there. Yeah. There might've been an injury, but you're not getting this. This is crazy. And this is all freak stuff. I mean, Nakua was untouched. No boom was untouched. We don't even know what happened to Ovula. They couldn't even give us a replay. I mean, it was a tough game, guys, but I, I am not at all going to sit here and say, yeah, I'm really disappointed in this team. We should have won, blah, 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 blah. They absolutely should have won. They were the better team tonight on the road. So you're asking them to go on the road, which they did. You're asking them to play without all these guys, which they did. Matthew Stafford was way leaps and bounds better than Jared Goff. Goff did not look good. Let me make that very clear. Let's go to golf statistics, right? Look at the defense and what they did. 18 of 28 for 217 yards, a touchdown and interception sacks. He wasn't good. They like 12.4 fantasy points here. Are you telling me that's a good day from Jared Goff? Absolutely not. He was pressured. I didn't think he played pretty well. And I think they told us that they didn't even believe in Jared Goff because when the overtime came, all they did was run it. They were like, we're not going to let Jared Goff ruin this game. We're not going to let Jared Goff beat us. We're going to hand it off to David Montgomery and basically just run down this defense that is, you know, been really good today, but is probably gassed at this point. And that's what they did. That's why they used Montgomery. But I, I mean, I understand Jamison Williams had a good day, but uh, you'll you'll give him that day if you can hold. Look at St. Brown. Three catches for 13 yards. See, the Rams' defense, because they lost this game and the way they lost it, they're not going to get the credit they deserve. But the Rams' defense was outstanding today. This is a young defense that I was expecting to not be dominant, not be a shutdown or lockdown defense. I thought this defense would be more so one that you would say, yeah, they're opportunistic. They can make a play here and there. They can make an interception. They can force a fumble, big sack. When needed, this defense looked really good. And I'll tell you right now, when Darius Williams comes back, I think they're going to look even better. And also, Jared Verse. So we always hear how great the, the Lions offensive line is. Jared Verse is a rookie. So I kept hearing all week how the young uh, defensive line of the Rams wasn't going to do anything. You lost Aaron Donald, they're not going to be any good. That's what I kept hearing. However, I saw a different thing. I saw a young defense, and I saw a young defensive coordinator that may have cracked the code. I mean, they looked really good. So, look, totally understand how people are going to take this. I do. I get it. But I'll, I'll say this right now. This team and how good they already are week one is what you should take away from this. They already played an overtime game against an NFC title team. Okay. That supposedly got better and the Rams supposedly got worse and they were definitely banged up tonight. A lot of injuries. They played them to overtime on the road. And just think about this. These rookies are going to get better. You don't think Jared Verse is going to continue to get better. You don't think Braden Fisk is going to get better. Their first games of their career. They're going up against Taylor Decker. They're going up against Penny Sewell. They're going up against Frank Ragnow. 
that's a really, really, really tough assignment. That's what gets me excited about this team. I'm not at all upset. Obviously, upset at the result. I think we all are. But take that away. Jared Verse looks every bit the role that they were hoping he would be. Braden Fisk, he had a tougher matchup, I would say. Braden Fisk, we didn't get to really see a ton of. Quentin Lake, I thought he looked really, really good um, for the most part. Repressed with Lake. Thought Curl had a good game. Trey White, despite the one blown coverage, he played really well. He's coming off a major injury, guys. He looked really good. Um, I mean, I just, I don't really even know what else to say when it, when it comes to this team. I mean, I'm just really, really impressed, really excited to watch this this year. Uh, hopefully the injuries check out to be okay. I mean, we'll, we'll probably find out over the course of time, I would assume, but yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, that, that's how I, I feel. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking right now to see if there's any injury updates or anything like that. Doesn't appear like there's anything that they have announced, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's a bummer. Any of these overtime losses are going to stink. I mean, if we're being honest, it's just not, it's not fun, but there's a lot of good to take away from this. And I think that's how I'm going to choose to look at it. You can sit here be upset and have it ruin the rest of your week and be like, Oh, we only play Arizona next week. And, like that's not even a fun game and look the rams are going to be fine they're going to be okay and anybody that's taken the under on eight and a half well they don't know what they're talking about or whatever their their thing was set uh josh cardi made both field goals today thought he looked good that's a big deal they have a legitimate kicker it looks like i wanted to see him get a chance to win the game did not unfortunately get a chance to see that uh michael hoyt did a really nice job setting the edge uh, on a few of those plays. So I was really impressed with that. Kobe Durant had some huge plays. Obviously he wants that interception back. That was, that was huge. If he got that, Oh man, John Johnson, again, the interception was huge. Um, yeah, it's just altogether. Bobby Brown gap filling was great. I, I just really, uh, Byron Young, of course, the, the sack, I think moving forward, you know, you had the, the Arizona Cardinals up next. Cardinals just played the Bills tough on the road. This is going to be, I believe, in Arizona. Yeah, it'll be in Arizona. The Rams typically do well there. Obviously, um, you know, what it comes down to is Sean McVay, and the Rams have always given the Cardinals fits uh, in Arizona, and Kyron Williams is probably not somebody they want to see. So we'll see what ends up happening there. But you have the Cardinals, then week three, you'll likely have Alaric Jackson back. Uh, from his suspension, week three against the 49ers. SoFi Stadium, first game of the year. Then you have week four against the Bears. Tough defense. If anything, if today is any indication, that defense is going to be tough week four. Caleb Williams, he's probably going to be a lot better week four than he was week one. He did not look good today. Uh, definitely making way too many mistakes. He took like a 25-yard sack, and he pretty much pushed that. So, you know, I, I, I think really... Looking at everything, I mean, the Packers game also, that's another thing you have to think about as well. Um, the Packers game now, potentially Jordan Love might not play. You have a bye week six. They're going to be able to figure this thing out. I think they already have it figured out. I think for a team that got no reps in the preseason, I, I was really impressed uh, with the way they played today. So that's what I'll say. Um, really appreciate Bleach Report for having me. I'm going to have more content on YouTube, so definitely check that out. Uh, be sure to follow me on the Bleacher Report app at JK Bogan. That same at JK Bogan. You can follow me on all social media, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Appreciate you. And, um, you know, it's always next week. <laughs> we'll, we'll be here for next week. So, um, you know, tough loss, but it's not the end of the world. We'll see you guys.